it's time to ride. And Harley Davidson's new XL 1200 Nightster certainly fits the bill. As you all know, the bare bones, air-cooled, 45 degree V-twin Sportster has been around since the 1950s. And back in those early days, it was known out on the streets as a serious 1200 cubic inch badass scooter. However, more recently, the Sportster kind of took on a reputation of being your basic Harley-Davidson starter bike. The edginess had become, well, kind of soft. So recently, the design team at Harley decided to take another look at the Sportster. And in an effort to get back some attitude, they took a page right out of the 1960s chop shop manual. Check it out. They bobbed the rear fender, removed the tail light, hinged the license plate holder. Then, for that total retro look, added fork gaiters, drilled out the belt guard and front fender bracket, and pretty much removed all of the chrome except the pipes and spokes. Voila! Instant attitude. And how does it all work? Well, here's my old friend Mark Kazmarek after a sunny day with the Nightster. So Mark, I've known you for quite a while now, probably over 20 years, and I know you through your, our association with the Ducati Owners Club, and I know you're a big fan of Italian motorcycles, so I was a little surprised when you sent the email that said, hey, can you get me a Sportster? I've always wanted to try one. Now, what is it about this bike that spoke to you? Well, Dave, uh, as, as one who's, who enjoys motorcycles, I've always been curious about how the Harley would feel. This bike is very elemental, two wheels, a motor, and a set of handlebars, and it's uh, very appealing, it's very romantic, and uh, thought that would be a, a great thing to try. Well, it's certainly a motorcycle that's steeped in history, and it's certainly a motorcycle that, uh, whose style has really not changed over the years, right? That's right. This, this, uh, the Sportster has been around for, what, 50, 55 years now? Yeah. And uh, you look at this bike, they've done a, an excellent job styling it to look like something that might have been customized by somebody any time during that 50 years. Right. It's got that sort of bobber look. Um, and typical of Harley, they did a, an outstanding job making all the pieces fit together really, really nicely. Yeah, it really does have a nice fit and finish to it. Let's, let's talk about that classic uh, 1200 V-Twin. What did you think of the motor? Um, Dave, I was, frankly, I was expecting to be a shaker. Uh, I think Harley is, has taken some criticism for that over the years, but they've done a really nice job. The, uh, the, the motor's rubber mounted now. Yeah. Um, so from the point of view of riding it, it was quite a, quite a comfortable ride. Well, it's, it, you said elemental, right? It doesn't get any more air, elemental no, than this, right? Air-cooled push rod. Uh, did it make enough power for you? Did it rev enough for you? I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. It, uh, it did make enough power. It's got a lot of bottom end power. I'll tell you one of the areas of disappointment though is that just as it feels like it's getting going, the rev limiter kicks in. It it's must be set at maybe 5,000 RPM. It's, uh, it's a bike that, that really feels like it wants to go faster than it's going. Right. Um, <clears throat> how did you find the, uh, the shifting? It's a cable actuated clutch, five speed tranny. How was it? The, uh, the clutch is actually a joy. It's a uh, butter smooth, very controllable. Um, didn't slip once, didn't have any problem chatter. Uh, I'll, I'll say the transmission is a little bit uh, elemental itself. It's, uh, it's fairly notchy and it needs a good, uh, a good foot to, uh, to move it, but it does shift. I never missed a shift at all. Yeah. And the clutch made up for quite a bit of that. I wonder, it's still a fairly new bike. I wonder if that would uh, smooth out a bit with break-in. I, I have a feeling, yeah, this has under 2,000 kilometers on it and I, I think it probably would, would do for a nice, uh, nice break-in period. This certainly isn't something that was built by AMF. You, you can tell Harley has come a long way in terms of fit and finish. What did you think? Oh, Dave, you're absolutely right. The bike has uh, nicely flowing lines. It has all the trademark Harley fit and finish, as you say. The pieces all fit together very well, operate very smoothly. The paint is, is a matte finish paint, but it looks really, really nice in person. Uh, they've taken a, a, a subtle effect, I guess, and they've uh, they blacked out a lot of things, used the gray crinkle finish on things. Looks great. So is there one thing that uh, you would say is definitely a downer for you? I would have to say that um, of anything, this bike is probably a little bit too small for me in that uh, I felt a little bit cramped. I'm uh, a little over six feet tall, and I felt that the seat, while it, it's a very comfortable seat, it puts you in one spot, and I didn't have a lot of room to stretch. So. For a longer ride, I think this bike would be uh, difficult to, for, for me. For a tall person. For a taller person. 
So I guess my last question would be, who would you recommend this bike to? What's it best suited for in terms of its riding position, in terms of wind protection, and in terms of the power? Where does this bike belong? Well, this bike is, it fits very nicely into the cruiser genre. It's great for going around town. It's great for day trips in the countryside. As I said, it's probably suited for somebody uh, who's a little shorter in stature. Get a uh, low seat, lets you put your feet on the ground. But you get a lot of smiles for your riding. And I think somebody who, who wants to get back to the basics of motorcycling, doesn't expect to go around the, around the world on it, I think it would be a perfect bike for them. Well, once again, Mark, you've done a great job. Thanks, Dave. Anytime you want to borrow a motorcycle, just send me another email. Absolutely. We'll make your wishes come true.